God, no. Of course it did this. <laughs> of all the... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why did it do this? Okay, we still, we still have a little bit of time to fix this. Okay. I'm going to check my connections and make sure everything's plugged in correctly. Alright, check the back here. Make sure this one's plugged in well. Oh, something's happened. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but... I, I, I still can't tell. Yeah, it's, it's still like doing the thing. I know. Oh, this oh, is... No. no. No, it was fine, but no! This is the worst time. I'm going to unplug that and replug. And then I'm probably just going to reset the, uh, the thing. Okay, I'm going to delete this, uh, <laughs> this input and remake it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I need a video capture device. Of course. <laughs> Why wouldn't it do this? Ah. Like, let me. The thing is, right? If I go to my actual input, yeah, it's reading fine. It's OBS that's the problem. Because I can, I can see this perfectly fine. Encoding overloaded. Okay, I'm gonna. I think I'm just gonna have to like bring down the stream uh, quality or something. Okay. I don't know. I mean, do you know what causes the problem? I have no idea. It just fixes itself after a little bit. <laughs> This is not even recognized anymore. I don't have game audio, so I think the connection has just gone away. I bet, oh, I bet you it's the USB. Uh, why did it have to do this? As far as, like, taking care of it and not freaking out, because I know I would be freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Not existing. Yeah, it just, like, doesn't even exist. If I go to this... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna power off the switch real quick, delete this, and then redo all of my uh, connections with my capture card. Okay, I'm gonna plug in this side instead. Should go in right there. This side, go right in here. Let's check. Properties. Nope, still nothing. You gotta be kidding me. Okay, it's back. We're good. Okay, it's back. It's back. It's back. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna mess with anything else. <laughs> okay, right on time. Holy fuck. Okay. Nice. Okay, nice. I'm I'm bringing it. I'm bringing everything up. Okay, we're good to go. <laughs> Normally, I would have like uh, a crop to, to get rid of the extra blacking around the edges, but oh well. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. No, no, no. We're fine. We're, we're yeah, we are just going to run with this. <laughs> okay, a bit of a scuffed start, but we should be able to get going as soon as we get back into that room. Yes. Um, OBS, don't mess up challenge. <laughs> impossible edition. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I'm going to do a little thing called... Uh, you don't get to see the password. <laughs> 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 they don't have the room up. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Um, encoding overloaded. <laughs> Whatever. What's a dash gun in oh. Alright, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> 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 oh man. I'm gonna check. Yeah, it, it, okay, so it still doesn't work on the actual, like, on the original source. So it's a good thing I made a new one. Because <laughs> yeah. that was the solution. Yes, I don't know what any of that means, but I'm glad it works. I seem to have time to go into detail here, so. <laughs> oh, never mind. No <laughs> okay, nope, we got a room, so I'm gonna switch inputs and we can get this going. Okay, so we got everyone in the room. Today we got a nice matchup between DePaul University and uh, Irvine Valley College Splatoon teams, the DePaul Scarlet versus the Irvine Valley Stingrays. Um, it is Division 4, Week 1 of the CCA League Fall Season. With me on the mic today, I have Ikar. Hello, I'm Ikar. Um, if you'd like to keep in contact with me, I will give my socials at the end of the set. In the meantime, I'm really, really excited to be uh, commentating for uh, these college Splatoon teams. Really, really honored to be here, and uh, yeah, thanks for letting me come on the mic with you. Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm glad that you agreed to come on with me, as this is my... Uh... My first uh, foray into this kind of world of commentary, so uh, <laughs> I'm gl glad that I've got somebody with some experience under their belt uh, beside me here. Um, <laughs> as we get started here, it uh, looks like we're going to be going into the match pretty soon. Uh, we're going to Tower Control on Hammerhead Bridge. Now, I have not seen anything from either of these teams, so I have no idea what to expect for the in terms of comps. Uh, but what do you think might be something that would be popular here, Ikar? Um, okay, so I will say backlines are pretty notoriously popular on this map. Um, a lot of Stringer, a lot of E-Leader, and of course with Tower Control, um, I think those could potentially be more prevalent. Uh, Blaster, of course, just by nature of Tower Control, also really good here. Um, I think you're right, just the fact that we haven't really seen what these teams like to run, it's a little bit hard to tell right now. Um, but I think those are pretty likely bets for what we may see. All right. Um, I know personally on tower control, uh, I've seen a lot of people running uh, wave breaker weapons just to put it straight on the tower, <laughs> oh, yeah. because it's nice to have that moving kind of location. Um, and then also, you know, you got your kind of your staples, your vacuum, you know, um, really can, like with how open Splatoon 3's meta is right now, I do expect to see backlines with uh, because it is tower control. Um, but besides that, you never really know. Um, oh, and here we go, starting in on Tower Control Hammerhead Bridge. Yes, and we are going to take a second here to see which team is which. Um, it looks like I believe that is Deep Hall in Yeah, the Deep Hall in the blue, yep. Mm -hmm. All right, and, and we, we have... do see that Range Blaster uh, plus the two Splatlings. Yes, um, we got the Hydra from DePaul and the Heavy from Irvine Valley College, um, as well as a couple of bubblers, one on each side. It's going to be interesting to see how those are going to be used. I expect we're going to be seeing a lot of bubblers on tower here. It uh, looks like DePaul already going ahead and taking the tower, but getting splatted in the process uh, by that Heavy Splatling. 
uh, one down on each side as this team fight plays out. Yes, the heavy spotlighting in a really, really prime position to get some picks, and you saw that on the roller. Unfortunately, the heavy is going to go down to this brush, but the brush is subsequently going to go down. Um, and even though you have that roller on the tower with the shield, it is still a 3v3. Uh, so it is possible to just throw some bombs and try to defend the tower, and you can see that the Forge is doing that pretty well here, along with that blaster AoE. Doing a really, yeah, really good, uh, um, and yeah. as we speak, the first checkpoint has already been cleared here by DePaul, um, with only the heavy slatling left, to get, trying to get some jumps. The pro goes down here, but the bubbler is on tower. Um, with the wave breaker coming out, the specials are coming out on the side here of IVC Stingrays, um, but nothing really seems to be coming too much of it. There's just a lot of scrappy team fights in mid here. Team fights, and now both teams at a 3v3 scenario. Um, no team really has an advantage, but as I say that, the brush uh, on the side of I believe that is uh, DePaul is gonna go down. Um, oh, and it's a 2v1, or sorry, uh, two down, one, one down on each side here, 3v2. Um, as Wavebreaker is coming out on the side of DePaul, we might see another push as two go down on the side. Alright, point is. It is okay, so it's two down each side. I don't know how much part of this push is gonna go with how little people there are left. Yeah, you could try to force something. It looks like JK is gonna try to do that now. I think, yeah, with the Hydra still up, it's gonna be pretty hard to do anything. So you're right, some kind of scrappy team fights happening in mid, a lot of deaths, um, but nothing yeah. happening here as of yet. Um, we do see the Wave Breaker being. The uh, Wave Breaker comes out. Oh, heavy trades out there for the 52 gal. Not sure if that's a great trade for that heavy splatling. You really want to have that um, that player alive to kind of back up your entire team. As we can see, there's a fight happening here on the tower. Roller takes one down. It is a delayed wipe for DePaul here, but the heavy has made it back to mid just in time. Yeah, fortunately, heavy is going to make it. Oh, but the jumps are all dead, and it's just the heavy again. DePaul getting the opportunity here to push their lead. Um, if the brush can trade out here, at least for the heavy, they might be able to make this happen. Uh, looks like he goes down, though. Two down on the side of DePaul. This is probably going to be where the push ends right here, as it's now three down. Hydra is the last one, just with their Booyah Bomb. Yeah, heavy getting a really nice kill there, but you know, I mean, if you're the brush in that situation, right, all you have to do is distract the heavy. And you just you have to go, okay, I don't want you looking at tower moments. And you can see they managed to get all the way to 44 because that heavy was the only one up, because they were distracted. Um, and they're still, they're kind of struggling to maintain mid control here with that numbers disadvantage. So, yeah, gonna be really, really hard to come back from that one. Yeah, um, we saw a really early wave breaker pop from the heavy at the beginning of that push. Um, didn't really do much. All it kind of did was tag the Hydra, uh, who was already in Booyah Bomb. So... <laughs> It wasn't very effective on that, and then just a lot of kind of one for one, one for one trades with the Hydra just not dying, uh, really helped uh, the Stingray or yeah, really helped the Stingrays be able to uh, keep their lead there. Yeah, and that's what you want, right? If you're the Hydra, if you're the Heavy, you want to stay alive um, for as long as you can as your team's primary aim. Is the Hydra doing an excellent Oh, but there's the Roller going down to the Range Blaster here. This could be some, uh, the start of something as an early Booyah comes out. The, only the Junior has gone down. Three specials online here for uh, DePaul. Or, no, this is the Stingrays. <laughs> I there's no tags. Um, heavy goes down. All the specials are out. The Range Blaster goes down. Man... DePaul has really managed to kind of regroup here and just play patiently to be able to avoid those specials. It is 2v2 it looks like here for uh, each team as the brush goes down to the slider shot pro. It'll be, uh, with only 15 seconds left on the clock, the Stingrays really have to make something happen here. And something is happening! <laughs> oh, but it's not in their favor. It is a wipeout for DePaul as... Uh, they managed to just hold on to their lead, really kind of securing mid control for the entire game here. Yeah, definitely, definitely a very, very strong game one. Um, even though I think the Hydra may have popped that Booyah Bomb a little bit early, it didn't matter because the rest of their team was able to go in, wreak havoc, get that wipeout, and they were all able to ride that tower into the sunset. So a very, very well played game. Yeah, I think... 
a lot of what we saw there was just some really good team coordination by uh, DePaul really shutting the Stingrays out and uh, the Stingrays more kind of individualistic play style was just not working out for them as they kept getting forced into 2v1s or into 1v1s where their range just did not have the advantage. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how they adapt going into the next mode. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm curious as far as adaptations go, because you're right. Um, their play style was very, very independent, and we did see that they were very much capable of winning fights. Um, I think it is just a question of can they capitalize off of the picks that they're getting. Um, and so an adaptation might be just to, to strategize and just say, okay, well, how can we try to stay alive for as long as possible? How can we maximize our presence on the field um, so that we can get those picks that we need, right? Even if we're not able to capitalize right away, if we have that presence, we can, you know, take our time with it. So um, interesting to see how they do that. We are going to go into Rainmaker Museum. Uh, any thoughts about this stage right off the bat? Um, I think for Rainmaker Museum, um, it'll be interesting because uh, the Stingray's more aggressive playstyle might actually pay off for them here um, in the more aggressive kind of mobile mode. Um, it'll be like, yeah, I think with specifically with Museum, the ability to just kind of um, for like one player, I know I had this in a scrim before where somebody was just kind of hiding behind our spinner and we just we had to take like 10 seconds to take care of that person because they just kept running around. And so if you can get somebody in there and just distracting the enemy team, you might be able to pull something off uh, with some sort of middle push. Oh, yes. And, you know, I mean, DePaul does have that brush ready to go. We already saw what they were capable of um, on their winning push. So I do wonder if that'll come into play here, if you just have the brush running around all willy-nilly and uh, you have to have... You know, the Stingers devote resources there, and the Rainmaker's just kind of free to go. Um, I think that's definitely a very, very valid strategy. And you can see um, Scarlet already all readied up here. Looks like they're very, very confident in their strategy. Um, they're ready to go. Um, yeah, no, excited to see what comes out of this. Um, especially Rainmaker, it's so fast, it's so aggressive, it's so volatile. I'm interested to see if either team will opt to run the back line. Yeah, um, I don't expect we'll see the Hydra coming back out um, from uh, DePaul. I believe it was DePaul who had the Hydra there. Um, I think we'll probably see something more mobile. We might even see a Charger uh, because of that ink back uh, if they don't opt to go Jet instead. Um, in terms of specials, uh, what do you think we're going to see? Um, I don't know. I think... Zook here would be really cool. Inkzooka. Um, I think Wavebreaker isn't terrible here. But, but we, we do have the Hydra coming back out from the side okay. of DePaul. Looks like it's very similar comps to what we were running last time. But you did. But just like you said, that Inkzooka is coming out yeah, yeah. from the Stingrays. Yeah, very, very, very good in Rainmaker. It allows you to get those picks without having to invest too many resources. Yeah, um, oh, and one already down here on the side of the Stingrays. The Splattershot Pro, who had gone for an opening flank, gets called out and killed. Um, looks like we got a jump who's, been, who's exposed there on the far side. It might go down again on the jump in, but the Punisher gets punished. 52 Gal goes down as it's now a 4v3, and the Stingrays save 3v2 now with three specials online. Yeah, those three specials online going to be very, very crucial here. We'll see if they and here comes the Zooka. Can he find even one pick? Does not manage to find anything. But the Rainmaker is alone. The flank comes in from the sploosh matic Goes down for a trade uh, with that hero shot. Rainmaker getting stopped there by the heavy slotling. Well done. The brush the last one alive on the side of Scarlet here. Um, if they can just keep themselves alive and get jumps in for their team, they might still be able to make something happen here. But the advantage is definitely in the favor of Stingrays right now. Oh yes, great pick on that Junior. It looks like the Zap on the side of Scarlet is just going to try to run that Rainmaker out of their base, try to gain some leeway, and it looks like they're kind of doing it. They do have the numbers advantage, but right now it's kind of just a bloodbath, and it doesn't really look like it's in anybody's favor as of yet. Yeah, uh, what I saw there uh, was that we, something we didn't mention was that they did bring Enzap, which means they have Tactic Cooler, and that's what they were running in with, was that the Heavy and the Rainmaker both were carrying Tactic Cooler buffs. 
and allow them to uh, kind of run in with a bit of a reckless abandon. Of course, unfortunately, it didn't work for them. But, you know, we, we saw that strategy uh, just earlier. What was it? Low Ink uh, in, in September where uh, I believe it was Sia just threw themselves at the enemy just constantly with Tacticooler and their constant pressure eventually you kind of broke through and that's what we're seeing here from Scarlet actually uh, being able to break through that checkpoint even though going three down in the process. Yes for sure and I think that's that is an adaptation that you need to make for Rainmaker. You need that speed, you need that aggression and I think running the zap here is a fantastic choice for that tactical or for the reasons that you just outlined. It's a very good strategy. So now you're going to see uh, both teams have two specials online. Oh, uh, but it's three specials online here for Scarlet. And it's a... Th oh, but the Rainmaker gets caught out. This could be the opportunity that uh, the Stingrays are looking for to stop this push in its tracks as both the remaining players are tagged. Yeah, but... Are just not able to keep that Rainmaker alive. Just not <laughs> trading out for almost every fight here, as far as we can tell. It just is not going the way that the Stingrays need it to right now. Yeah, not at all. And I think if, if you're the Stingrays, um, you, you definitely may feel like panicking right now. If you can play patient, capitalize off of these picks. And leave yeah, they have to move like right go. now. It yeah. is three down. It is a delayed wipe on the side of... Uh, Scarlet here. This is definitely going to be checkpoint, but because the other team has already gotten the checkpoint, that those points don't count quite yet. But it looks like this could be a lead. There it is. The lead switches in favor of the Stingrays as they push all the way here to 39, dodging and weaving between all the different members of Scarlet. The stamp coming out from the sploosh here. Not going to be able to find anything so far, but looks like they're oh. Might be able to find this jump. Oh, but they're going to get caught out here. Going to have to back up. Rainmaker is still stuck there on the right side as the Sploosh dives in here for the kill on this pro, but does not manage to find it. Three down on the side of Scarlet again. Again, yeah. However, um, Scarlet does have that Booyah bomb up. They've got their Hydra in. But they don't! <laughs> the Slattershot Pro here taking out that Hydra, eliminating that Booyah bomb. Only 45 seconds left on the clock. Really only one pushing opportunity left here for Scarlet as they take down that pro that's been annoying them all game. Two down on the side of... Uh, two down each side here. One Rainmaker carrier. This could be really interesting. Oh, oh but the Rainmaker's alone. Oh, Th this could be it. But the Stingrays don't take the opportunity to push him. He, they didn't have enough players to make it happen. Briar Bomb ready for Scarlet here. And a player already down. Two players down. The Trizook is not going to find anybody here. The Booyah is coming out. This could be the game. But the Raymaker is afraid. The Raymaker is afraid. Can they get all the way through? The Raymaker goes down. And there's not going to be enough time to pop the shield. The game goes to the Stingrays. Well played. Beautiful plays from everyone. The Stingrays really, really stepping it up that game, doing what they needed to do to take the win, and they did it expertly. Absolutely. Uh, they, they, were, they did exactly what you said they should. They uh, played patient, knew their strengths, and they waited until they got those picks. Also, yeah. I've been asked to turn you up, so I'm going to put you up to 150. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you all enjoyed my voice. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Yeah, that was a very well played game by both teams. Just unfortunate that uh, Scarlet didn't manage to keep enough players alive to get their push going. They had two players in front of the Rainmaker and the Heavy behind, but both players went down almost immediately as soon as they broke that checkpoint, and it just wasn't enough to defend. Yeah, but I will say credit where credit is due to DePaul. Um, their defense when they did have lead was fantastic. Their Hydra did a great job of staying alive, anchoring for their team. Uh, their Slayers did a great job. Um, and then, of course, the Stingers playing patiently, right? Uh, not feeding into that Rainmaker, even with the threat of overtime. Just staying back, using your bombs, popping your Zuka, doing a really, really good job of just... Not necessarily killing the Rainmaker, not trying to force the Rainmaker to back up, but just making sure they can't move, right? And that's that's all you need to do, um, and they did a great job of that. Yeah, um, 
I was, yeah, I wasn't expecting to see the Hydra in that game, but the Hydra did its job, and that's what you need. Like, if you're gonna bring a backline like that, you need them to carry their weight, and the Hydra absolutely did that. Oh, for sure, as did the Heavy. Um, I was really surprised by how well both backlines were playing. They were especially, like, uh, playing really well off of weapons like Sploosh that you don't necessarily think... You know, you don't see a Heavy in a Sploosh or a Hydra in a Sploosh, and you, you, you think, like, these weapons don't synergize that well together, but... Um, making it work out they made it work fantastically so really 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 impressive stuff there yeah um as we move on to the next game here clan blitz on eeltail alley uh, what are your thoughts on this map mode well <laughs> i um personally eeltail well not personally objectively it's really 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 narrow <laughs> that is true really good Blaster, range blaster, really good. Gal, obviously that wall is really, really oppressive here. Um, but this is, it's clan blitz, so it's mostly going to be about how well can teams coordinate off of their kills and off of their specials. Yeah, we have uh, Depaul Scarlet here in the orange, Stingray's in the blue. Um, as the Hydra and the Heavy both come right back out, but dropping, uh, Stingray is deciding to drop. Um, the hero shot and the end zap in favor of Junior and Ink Brush. Two, three Ink Brushes on the stage right now. <laughs> I'm not sure what the plan is here from Scarlet, but I, it'll be interesting to see. I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> For sure, uh, the double brush. Um, that is a first. Um, yeah. But it's sort of reminiscent of what we were talking about earlier. Um with just distractions and well you know if they're too busy focusing on the brushes and they can't focus on the basket but if the brushes just go straight down then it's not going to matter how much they're distracting people uh it is a 3v2 in favor of scarlet here uh, but only seven clams as the maximum anybody's possession um so not going to be seeing really any pushes yet until this team until these teams start to get that objective going um but Special coming out, trying to push away those enemy players. Got one uh, trapped in the corner over there, but nobody's going to push him. Brush is running in, falls off, and has to go back. Unfortunate happens to the best of us. Um, but that that right there, that's what you need, right? And there we go. Okay, uh, now it looks like something may be happy, happening. Uh, both. The brush is gonna run in here, gets the score, but I don't think they're gonna get really much else from their team here. Nobody was ready for that push except for the brush. Uh, I don't think the other brush even even has any clams. The only one left with any clams on Scarlet here is the pro with seven or with six, um, and just can't get to the basket in time. So. It almost feels kind of like a solo queue strat that we typically see in solo clans, especially in Splatoon 2, when you just have a brush that just runs in and scores, and you kind of hope that you just win off of that. <laughs> but we'll see if that uh, strategy seems to develop at any point during this game. Oh, yes. Um, and that, that strategy can work. Um, it can. The issue there is it, it's that team coordination, right? If you're not ready to capitalize off what your brush is doing. Like, yeah. Yeah, and I think that... Um, we now see, I believe, uh, it's Stingrays in the orange. They have a free Mercy Clam ready to go. It's Stingrays in the blue. Um, we, got, uh, we got Scarlet and orange. Yeah, Scarlet has a free Mercy Clam ready to go now, um, which they could use at any time. If they can um, pick it up. <laughs> they can pick it up. <laughs> and it's gone. Okay. They now have to rebuild their clams. They have nine. Down out of six. Um, as the, st yeah, the Stingrays here do need to uh, pick up some, <laughs> some objective. Uh, once they get some uh, some picks there, I didn't even realize that Heavy is running Thermal Ink, uh, it looks like. Uh, let's see, is it Thermal Ink or Haunt? The Heavy is running Thermal Ink, okay. Um, the Crab Tank, Booyah Bomb, both coming out, two down on the side of the Stingrays as the Crab trades out. Um, it's going to be uh, DePaul's chance to really take control of mid here, get that objective pushing. Um, but special advantage in favor of the Stingrays. Yes, they do get the clam in. They do take some control of mid, but it, it looked like they were a little bit reluctant to invest a lot of resources there, and they are going to pay for it going three down. That is a delayed wipe. Uh, yes. Means, yeah. But they did pass the 60-point threshold, which means that a double clam push from the Stingrays can't beat their score right now. They ha The Stingrays have to put a bit more work into their push, and... Three down on the, on the side of <laughs> DePaul, three down on the side of Stingrays. The push looks almost identical. <laughs> yeah, and again, just getting to 80, um, you've got a minute left. Once you, you really, 
you really want to get more than one at this point. Um, and I think that's that's really hard. Um, um, and it looks like we might see another one of those just sort of run in, throw the clam in strategies. Oh, but we got two down, two down on the side of Stingrays here. Oh. Not enough plans to make a ball yet. On oh, three down, the brush trades for three. That is a really well played uh, trade there. Heavy just barely managing to save that power glam, trying to do what they can. What is up with the score? Do you, do you see that? <laughs> yeah, um, yes, yes, I do see the score. Um, <laughs> Uh, why, why is it still blue? <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, I don't know. A clam going down. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> assuming that doesn't actually affect the game state at all. Uh, <laughs> let, let's see. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I think both teams' baskets are where they should be. So, <laughs> I, th I think it's just a visual bug here. Uh, a little bit of spectator lag there. Whales coming out on both sides. Two power clams for Scarlet here, who's already in the lead. That's going to give them some special charge advantage, um, but they are a player down. So if, but the Stingers really need to make a power clam right now. And if they don't, this game is over. But as I say it, the Brush makes a power clam. They have 20 seconds to make their push. Yeah, 20 seconds up, but you have, I mean, that, that Hydra in position, yeah. And, and the Crab down. Tank in position, and it's two down. It does not look like this game is going to be going where they want it to go. With only like a second left on the clock here. The ball goes in and scores anyway. <laughs> Just for All right. <laughs> yeah. Just well to played. Sure. GG. Um, that was a very interesting game, I think, for a multitude of reasons. Um, first of all, okay, the visual bug. <laughs> kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but I do think that double brush strategy ended up working out for Scarlet in a really interesting way in terms of developing the strategy. And I think it's just because the brushes were being so hyper-aggressive. I wonder if the Stingers were just, uh, again, like a bit reluctant to um, kind of like throw themselves into fights or really, really use their specials and use their resources. Um, and so I think that was very, very effective. I like that from them. I would like to see more of that aggression. And um, we always like to see more of that, of that aggression. So <laughs> yeah, especially coming off of Splatoon 2 where aggression didn't exist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really refreshing to see these much more aggressive kinds of play styles. Um, those playmaking specials that we were all hoping for. Um, <laughs> yeah, but oh, man. <laughs> we will be going into the most passive mode in Splat Zones. Um, we're going to Sturgeon Shipyard. We're going straight back to Splatoon 2, baby. <laughs> Our favorite. Yes. Yeah, oh, dang it. <laughs> Random person joined lobby. Oh, man. Oh, no. That's... Oh, I, I don't have any, like, contact for them, so... Hopefully they just leave. <laughs> 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 hopefully, hopefully they re recognize what's going on, but the thing is, there's no team tags in this lobby. So, it's... It would, I imagine it's kind of hard to realize what exactly is going on here. Um, I, okay, I will say real quick, I love everybody's names that's in here, but <laughs> team, tags, team tags are really, really helpful, um, for the spectators to identify who's who, for the audience to identify who is who, um, it's helpful for VOD reviews and anybody who may be reviewing your VODs, so, um, that, that could definitely be something to look into. I will say, hey... Um, with the angry smiley face is probably one of my favorite names of all time. <laughs> uh, so I'm not really complaining, uh, but yeah, something to consider there. Yeah, I think what's probably just going to end up happening is they're going to have to close the room because I have no way to com uh, communicate with this person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That happens. You bonked up. What does that mean? I'm <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah, we are going to be uh, remaking the room here. Um, so I'm going to probably disable the, uh, <laughs> the... What's it called? The actual uh, stream itself real quick. The, the game overlay. Um, so that <laughs> we don't end up uh, revealing the password for that person to get back in. <laughs> <laughs> Because this time they actually did make it with a password, or at least they will be. So okay. we will. Awesome. 
man. I am... I, I'll, I, I'd like to fill the silence a little bit. <laughs> I want to... Real, 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 real quick. Um, IVC. Uh, I mean, you, you guys are in my home state. Um, I love you guys. I am super close to you guys. Like, I am so, so, so ecstatic um, that you guys are playing in this. Thank you so much. Uh, same with you, DePaul. Um, Chicago, my beloved. You guys are fantastic. Like, this, this, this whole thing. I remember, um, you know, towards the end of Splatoon 2, there were, what, like, like, two college teams? I don't know, like, like, 11? Yeah, something college. like that, yeah. Something like that. And, and now we're, we're, we have enough to fill, like, what, what was it? Like, two Looney Divs? Two and a half Looney Divs, yeah. Two and a half? Yeah. There are 60 teams. <laughs> That's insane. That's actually, actually incredible. So I don't know. Thank you. Thank you guys so, so much for helping the scene grow and just for giving me, giving me teams to root for. Uh, and giving <laughs> us favorite. Just, just thank, thank you guys so much. Um, appreciate it a lot. Yeah, it looks like we have the room back up. So now that we are rid of our uh, pesky pigeon, if you, you can say. <laughs> 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 yeah, we will be going over to uh, Slot Zones on Sturgeon Shipyard uh, <laughs> with a 2-1 to one game currently in favor of DePaul Scarlet. I'm glad that, is, uh, that it's this close, honestly, because uh, commentating a 4-0 four, uh, sweep would not have been nearly as fun. <laughs> oh no, not at all. I mean, these are, these are some of the closest games that... Honestly, I think I've ever seen um, these two teams feel really, really evenly matched. Um, I think that first game, the Stingers kind of faltered a little bit. I think they just needed that to find their stride because they've been doing so well. And Scarlet has just been like consistently putting on the pressure. Um, and yeah, this has just been an absolute blast to watch. Uh, both teams very evenly matched, very, very good players. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how we, when we go here to Splat Zones, we we know that both teams are going to bring a back line, the Heavy and the Hydra, respectively. Um, I'm curious to see, because I think my prediction is that we'll probably get Junior um, from, what was it, the Stingrays who were bringing Junior already. I don't know if we'll see Brushes. Um, if we do, it'll probably be Octobrush, like we saw on Tower. Um, but yeah, let's see what we got here as we go. Onto Splat Zone's Sturgeon Shipyard. All right, waiting for a second to see which team is what color. We are gonna have D. Paul in the orange and Stingrays in the purple. We have missiles, ladies and gentlemen. We have uh, our first missiles of the game. <laughs> we also have that slusher with the tri strike. Yes, That's we do. Cool. Um, and as I predicted, we do have Junior coming out from the side of the Stingrays. Um, and we have a roller and splash, interestingly, from the uh, from the Scarlet. Missiles already out. It has been 20 seconds, and missiles are already out. <laughs> God, we really are. We really are playing Splatoon 2. <laughs> it's three down. It's two v one. Everyone's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Right now. Especially as he's being tagged, but oh, can he get the second one? Also, we interestingly, I didn't note this at the beginning, but we don't have the Hydra. We have a heavy instead. It's two heavies. Oh yeah, the heavy dittos here, I think, is a really, really interesting choice here. Um, I will say, and I want to touch on this really, really briefly, but roller on this map. You have to watch out for it, because if you don't, especially if you're running like these close range fighters, uh, like Reflux and Junior, um, Roller can really, really shark under that bridge and get those fast and easy picks, and it's really good at putting on pressure and engaging in walkouts. So, if that Reflux, if that Junior aren't careful, they can be absolutely crushed. Uh, just wanted to mention that real quick, right now. Yeah, um, there's going to be some fighting here going on on the zone. Bubbles on each side, missiles coming out. There's two down on the side of DePaul here as the uh, as the Stingrays have another special ready. Not uh, not going to pop it just yet, which I approve of because they didn't need it, right? They still have that wave breaker for when uh, DePaul inevitably has to push back in. And okay, here it comes. Here comes the wave breaker just to kind of secure this lead, I would imagine. The tagging that player behind that area, two three down. The last the last one is the roller popping bubble, probably just to protect themselves at this point and maybe even just get some jumps in. 
lead switching hands to the Stingrays here, as DePaul really needs to start making a push with 30 ticks left on the clock. Yeah, DePaul doesn't really have a lot of pain established, uh, needs these picks, needs these specials, does there, so There's a pick, and we got two specials yeah, online. Here's the, here's the try strike we got Crab up, we got uh, and th two down on the side of the Stingrays. Didn't even need to use two of their specials. Three down, the Wavebreaker's still here, and they still have a Crab Tank to defend with. This that could be a good hold. Fantastic, and now that Splash in position to use Crab Tank and try to engage in that lockout if it wants to, but that right there was perfect. That's what we that was, see. Yeah, that was exactly what we needed to see. They are just absolutely staggering the Stingrays here. Not seeming to be able to collect themselves. Only one special online and two players still dead. Bubble are coming up on the zone to provide jumps and protection for those last two players. Um, the last one alive has the crab tank, but I think jumps are going to be coming in soon to that bubbler. I guess not. Okay, if the splash wipes the entire team, then the splash wipes the entire team. The, I think the Paul just won this game. <laughs> yeah, you know, if you don't need the crab tank, you don't need the crab tank. You can just just shoot the enemy, right? Just get okay. on the zone. <laughs> <laughs> the splash took a 3v1 and won. <laughs> oh, wow. Well oh. played. Well played. Great shield there. Uh, great, great splash gameplay. Um, wow. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I was not anticipating that. I thought that was going to be a swing into the Stingray's hands. The splash was going to go down. Um, and we were going to get a bit more of a fight. But uh, nope. The splash said, nah. I'm the hero. <laughs> yeah. You know what? No, I'm not gonna <laughs> give the zone to you. Actually, uh, I am just. Uh, I think we're both just really, really, really pleasantly. <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like okay. I was not expecting that this last to win that fight, but congratulations. It is now match point for DePaul St uh, Scarlet here. Um, as we go to Tower Control Mako Mart. Um, tower Control being a mode that DePaul has already won on, um, although Mako Mart being the more enclosed, uh, kind of aggro-heavy he uh, map that it is, we might see a bit more of a balance between the teams here. Yes, for sure. Um, I know I keep mentioning this, and that's because it's really good, but again, that range blaster. Um, really, really good here. Um, of course, we're expecting to see uh, that double splatling again. Um, I think we'll probably end up seeing a roller, we'll probably end up seeing a junior, just because of how valuable Bubble is on that tower. Um, I think for this game, just because it is match point in favor of Scarlet, it's going to be a lot less about how do we adapt with our weapons, and more so like, hey, you know, if you're Scarlet, you know what the Stingers have been running. I mean, you just fought yeah. the game. Right? <laughs> so it's more so a question of just like, keep doing what they've been doing. Yeah, um, close out the set. Yeah, I think uh, the Stingrays are really going to have to pull something out of the hat here. They gotta, If they want to win this set, they have to win the next three games. Uh, <laughs> and so, Which means they have to win on two modes that they've already lost on previously. Uh, let's see what we got. We have Tower Mako, Rainmaker, Hagglefish, and Clamblet's uh, Mincemeat. Um, and Clamblet's Mincemeat, as we've all seen so far, is really hard to score on. So <laughs> yeah, if we, we get to Game 7... It'll, it's basically like a coin toss, as far as I can tell. <laughs> oh, no, for sure. I mean, we saw on that Eel Tail Clams game how much of a stalemate it was for a lot of, most most of the match. But obviously, the Stingray is very much capable of making the comeback. Um, again, that Rainmaker game was expertly played on their part. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's still winnable for them, but they are definitely going to have to step it up. Yeah, um, I think if they kind of go back to the strategy they were using for that Rainmaker game, uh, because that strategy wasn't a Rainmaker-specific thing. That was something that you can do pretty much at any time. Uh, just like with their comp and how they like to play, they need to play a bit more patient um, and take those team fights. And sure, every now and again, the Splash is going to win a team fight that it really shouldn't have. But <laughs> in most cases, you're gonna, uh, when you take a 3v1, you win. So right. if you, yeah, you got to like wait for those picks to come out, like, and wait for those specials. Uh, we saw a lot of the times the heavy would, the heavy or the hydra would find one, um, and then you can kind of use that to try and snowball in if you got a special ready. Um, we saw that that's actually what DePaul did on previously on Sturgeon uh, was the heavy found a pick on the Splattershot Pro, I believe it was, 
or I don't I don't remember who it was that uh, the, the the heavy picked off. But the point is, somebody went down, and then the triple strike came out, and then everyone painted the zone, and the stingrays the, the stingrays just went two down, two down, two down, two down constantly, and were locked out for the rest of the game. <laughs> so if the stingrays can kind of emulate that, I think we can see something good, something magical happen here. Absolutely. There is the roller on the side of Scarlet, and there is the blaster on the side of the Stingrays. We do see both teams <laughs> opting to run uh, those he uh, those heavy weapons, but we also see the shot with the Ink Zuka from Scarlet. Yeah. Um, instant flank from the roller here. Super long flank, but at this level, people don't tend to check their maps, so I think the heavy might just go down here. But he's oh. made aware by the range blaster, who's probably I think the range blaster re was respawning. Uh, from some engagement earlier um, and was able to warn the heavy a roller going down there three of um, I didn't know who was who here uh, this is uh, purple is the stingrays uh, we got the stingrays here in mid uh, a lots of tags going up as um, we, another wave breaker is ready on the side of uh, the stingrays here uh, range blaster going down to that hydra swaddling yeah even though that roller got punished um, for that flank, its team is still going to be able to maintain mid control, um, which is really, really nice. Hydra now going to be taking those stacks, going to be trying to exert its control, fish for those picks. Uh, hasn't found one yet, but is looking for one. For the heart, one of the arguably most difficult checkpoints to pass through on this map is that first checkpoint. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that just big ledge there, pretty much any weapon can set up there, right? If you've got an Inkzuka, you can shoot onto that tower. If you've got Whale, you can shoot your Whale up there. And that uh, is a delayed wipe on the side of the Stingrays, as Apollo is going to be able to take mid control here and going to be able to push up. Uh, with that Inkzuka already ready, the Hydra is now positioned on tower to take care of that Range Blaster that's been annoying them the whole game. The Range Blaster is going down as the shot is going to get challenged here by, I believe, the Heavy Splatling. Lead is being taken as the first checkpoint is broken here by DePaul. Um, oh, not managing to find that kill and goes down to the heavy as the Booyah comes out. They're approaching the second checkpoint at this point, but only two players are left alive. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're going to be able to pass through that first checkpoint. Uh, yeah, the Hydra and the Roller are both down now. Um, and now the Brush down. Only, yeah, losing that mid control. And the Wavebreaker getting instantly broken by the tower, not being able to find any value out of that, unfortunately. The Roller diving in out of nowhere, getting a kill, and everyone is dead. <laughs> the entire team is dead. It is a full wipe for, uh, for DePaul here, as they're going to be able to set up another push. Maybe. <laughs> Unless that Heavy manages to keep them back. Uh, heavy, uh, Hydra here getting challenged by, it looks like, the Range Blaster. Um, getting pushed back out to mid with a jump. Bubbly nice going. Oh, I, 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 pardon me. Um, <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, some smart. You really, if you really don't want your high, you don't want that hydra on that stack. So if the range blaster, if the range blaster here with that zoning can keep. Um, and so another, <laughs> another wave breaker goes down to the tower. <laughs> Three down here on the side of DePaul. The last one left is the is a shot with that Ink Zuka. Probably just going to opt to back out here, I'd imagine. Uh, let's see what they're up to. Yeah, just going to kind of shark here on this stack. Um, tower, go ahead and move back to mid. Gets directed by the Range Blaster. Everyone is now delayed wipe. Uh, or wi coming back from DePaul here. Yeah. Um, and Stingray's going to take mid. Uh, fortunately, that Wave Breaker not... <laughs> He's gonna get some use there. Roller um, being able to find a pincer attack with their teammate. Uh, two going down on each side as the junior here is just trying to paint for a special and throw some bombs uh, as juniors are wont to do. So <laughs> maybe gonna try and push out that Hydra soon with that Roller on the tower. Roller finding at least two if not three. Gonna be able to put Bubbler on tower and set up a push here with only a minute left on the clock. second checkpoint we'll see if they can maybe maybe them. not that range blaster is still there going to be pressuring the tower the junior is running straight at it probably going to die for it i would imagine um uh, oh not quite dead yet they're they're I still there <laughs> okay junior gets rolled over <laughs> <dead> <laughs> the, yeah 
as the tower is being challenged by the heavy. The brush is going to go ahead and challenge that heavy on the tower. Heavy has to back out, dies probably for it, trades out. Uh, but it looks like this push is going to be stopped in its tracks. Not necessarily with the Hydra and the Roller still made. If they can find those picks there, they can try to force the tower and try to keep that in mid. And it looks like that's what the Roller is going to try to do. Now another okay. bubbler going up. To, um, there we go. It's two down on the side, and the, it's game. That is DePaul's win. <laughs> that range blaster just on the tower, but not not quite, quite yet. Yeah, quite enough, yeah. Right that is unfortunate. They just uh, the stingrays just couldn't seem to be able to take out that hydra. I think the hydra is really what was stopping them there, as well as the rollers flanking, just being able to kind of work together with each other and systematically eliminate the entirety of the stingrays one by one. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, I will say I do think that the Stingrays had the right strategy there, especially, uh, yeah, the Range Blaster, making sure that the Hydra wasn't set up on their stacks for too long. Um, but just not really, you're right, they just weren't able to find an opening, that Roller just being too disruptive, that Hydra just being too much of a brick wall for them to break through. Yeah, and for those of you who are wondering, even though this is a best of seven set, uh, it is uh, <laughs> Collegiate Cephalopod Association tradition uh, to play all seven games anyway. So we will be going, even though DePaul has won this game, to Rainmaker on Hagglefish Market. Hagglefish are beloved. Right? <laughs> um, it is a great map. I love this map. It's so good. <laughs> it's, so <laughs> it's probably like one of the best new maps, I'd say. Agreed. If not the best new map. Yeah. Um, I, I enjoy this map with every weapon. Like I, I play like machine, fifty-two gal, charger, hydra. Like it works for everything. <laughs> oh, yes. oh, absolutely no! I, I, you're right. You could run pretty much anything, right? Because if it's not, it either it uses the side alleys to do what it wants. Like if you're playing a roller, or it uses that mid area, like you know, rapid blaster. Every yeah. weapon has a strength on this map. Yeah, it's, for those side routes, it's all about picking your timing wisely. Because if you get called out, you are dead. So, <laughs> because of course, the back lines are just really sitting there, kind of like, especially uh, on a, like, it's not, it's not splat zones, but on a mode like splat zones, um, on this map, the back lines don't tend to move very much from like, kind of like that back mid area. So if somebody spots you, <laughs> their head, this is going to turn 45 degrees and look straight at where you are. <laughs> Uh, for sure. Rainmaker, it's a bit of a different story. It's so much more chaotic. It's a lot easier to get away with those little cheeky flanks, especially if you're playing a roller or a brush, um, or even a junior with that shield. Um, you can really, really just go in and be a distraction. Um, and the backline, there's just so many things going on that the backline can't really devote much attention to you. Um, and that's kind of what you want. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hanglefish technically has multiple ways you can push the Rainmaker, but most people only use the one. Um, because brute, kind of brute forcing your way straight down mid tends to be the way that works the best. Um, for the first time this set, we are seeing a Charger out of the Stingrays. Um, <laughs> kind of living up to their name there as the weapon with the Stingray in the previous game. <laughs> Yep. I, I, I had to make that joke eventually. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 good job, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we got a Luna Blaster and a Slosher and a Blob. Three weapons that we've either only seen once or had not seen at all from um, DePaul here. Really probably feeling like they can experiment a bit more uh, because the game no longer really matters to the score of the set. <laughs> so... I think that's really what we're seeing here is both teams feeling a bit more free to kind of mess around with different weapon choices without feeling the pressure of a tournament set. Oh yes, for sure. I definitely like the, the um, Dually Sculptures here are a really interesting pick. The Charger, I think, is just really, really good to experiment with. So we'll see if we can kind of hone in on those weapons and what they do to the game. That Charger is going to be backing against the Rainmaker. Uh, they are going to go down, kind of back into a corner without yeah. their team. I'm surprised the Blobloader didn't die to that vacuum shot, though. That looked like they were right in the middle of it. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> <Speaking> <laughs> Everyone's dead. <laughs> Alright, we got 
All right, Julius Wilge is here, kind of pushing in, make, making sure to get rid of that heavy splatling. But he gets taken down by the Luna and the Raymaker at the same time here. Uh, Luna getting tagged by that angle shooter, but immediately taking out that pro. Um, Splat Charger here taking out the Luna Blaster in return. Not <laughs> I love the partial charges. One of my favorite things to do is kill with partial charges. <laughs> to see them. A great triple there from this charger. Gonna go down to that Luna, but the Luna subsequently... Getting a triple in return. Oi! <laughs> Everyone's just dying all the time. <laughs> um, yep, yeah, mm, yeah, this, mm, yes. Rainmaker. <laughs> Rainmaker moments for sure. Uh, we got... The lead is still very much in the advantage of DePaul here uh, in the yellow. Um, as Vac is coming out and jumps are coming in. Um, Julius Welch is one shot away from death, but retreating smartly into the protection of their ink vac. Um, Hydra putting that, that Booyah Bomb kind of for nothing. Uh, but it was uh, certainly a threat uh, nonetheless, as uh, the Stingrays are finally going to be able to take control of mid here with that Raymaker pop. Yeah, they take control of mid, but they're not really in a position to push up that Rainmaker. Uh, no one on the enemy team is down. Um, they don't have any specials either, and it looks yeah, like... Yeah, and it is a 3v1 uh, yeah. here on the side of DePaul, uh, with the Charger now probably going to die to this Luna Blast here. Luna might, might, might even find two. Um, before going down. Or they're just going to retreat, smartly enough. <laughs> I think there's a... Oh, never mind. The flank was caught out and, and killed. So, they don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, okay, we got a Zipcaster coming out here from the Luna Blaster. The first one I've seen all game. Um, trying to get up and pressure that Charger, but just not being able to get up there. Oh, <laughs> oops. <laughs> uh, Wavebreaker coming out, as well as, I believe, Tactic Cooler uh, from that end zap. Uh, Hydra getting pushed here by the Julie Squatcher. Julie Squatcher is diving into a 3 one and just dying on the spot. <laughs> yeah, really unfortunate. Um, those tactics are up, um, which means that there's a bit of leeway, but unfortunately the Julie Squatchers didn't take any beforehand. We do see this vacuum in mid, gonna get punished this gets, Yeah, easy. immediately killed. Yeah, again, just sort of vacuum when your, your team isn't there. Um, just a, a bit hard to And now it's a delayed wipe. Yeah, it's a delayed wipe, and unfortunately the Stingers are kind of dropping like flies, and Scarlet able to push up this Rainmaker through that choke point, this Luna And the Luna going ahead and flanking, but gets caught out and dies. Uh, it is now 4v3 in favor of the Stingrays, uh, as the Rainmaker 2, is that 3 down to a bomb? <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> well, I've seen worse. I had a game the other day where I went 4 down to a bomb, but... <laughs> That is still definitely something you like to see as the person who threw that bomb. <laughs> sure, Jay Schloss, let's get you to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> but no, um, Hydra here taking a position on the left side. Uh, DePaul really having been opting to take this left push all the time, uh, not really supporting the Luna Blaster. Um, I would personally be taking the middle route here. As uh, the Stingrays don't seem to be really adept at defending that, especially with how far, how fast they've been going down. Um, but here comes a, an ink back. Rainmaker gonna have to back up for that. Yeah, now there's a really really good use of the ink back uh, with the rest of their team. They're forcing that Rainmaker out, and it looks like the Rainmaker is trying to stall it, but they are gonna get caught out into that corner. But the last one alive is the Splatter Shot Pro, and he might be about to go down. He's done, and this game is over. <laughs> Wait, oh, man. unless it, it- wait, how did the Luna oh, die? <laughs> what would the Luna die to? <laughs> it must have been a wave breaker or something. Yeah, it must have been. Yeah, that is one of the, the downsides of using dualies, is they have a bit harder of a time dodging that wave breaker when they're in kid form. Yeah. Uh, and you can tell the Luna wasn't really paying too much attention to the wave breaker anyway, since the entire enemy team was down, so they probably didn't think there was much of a threat. <laughs> right. Yeah, so... That was our game six going again to went, DePaul. That was the Luna that went down. Not the yeah, it was a Luna that went down, yeah. I expected that the Dooley Squatchers got the kill with the with the uh, Wave Breaker. With the Wave Breaker. Okay, I see. Um, yeah, I was talking about Dooley Squatchers. And <laughs> my, my, my mind is a mess. I just, the, that, that, that game, that whole game was just a, a total bloodbath. Like, the whole thing was a yeah. massacre. The um, team fight never ended. <laughs> it was a team fight the whole time. Um, but yeah, no, in all seriousness, uh, good job holding that mid-pressure, exerting your control um, from Scarlet, doing a really, really good job there. 
um, that Hydra consistently staying alive. Um, I like the Luna on this map. I think Zipcaster is really good for getting those picks. Um, I also like the DS um, from the Stingrays, those Dually Squelchers. Um, I did, oh man, that bomb kill was really nice. <laughs> uh, that movement is really nice. Um, I would like to see some experimentation with those a bit more. I think that's a weapon that they could really, really use, um, especially with, you know, their more like individual aggressive play style. I think it would benefit them really well. Um, no, just, just. Yeah. Just um, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a game for sure. It was one of the games of all time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, as for Clan Blitz Mincemeat, our game seven uh, for this set, um, I think we actually might see the Charger again. I actually do prefer Charger over Splatling on this map, um, just because, uh, of course, Charger with its uh, with its greater range, um, and you know, like sure, Splatlings love being on grates, but Charger loves Splatling being on grates. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because sure. sure you might have run speed, but run speed never compares to swim speed. So, Char Charger just kind of gets free pickings if they can aim on this map. Uh, so I think we might see that again here from the Stingrays. If not, uh, then uh, we'll probably just see another Splatling 1v1 um, with maybe even a Zipcatcher. I've seen Zipcatcher be effective on this map as well. Oh yes, for sure. And we do know that I believe Sapphire was the Charger. Um, we do know that Sapphire can aim, so I will say if they choose to go charger and scarlet chooses to go splatling um i think that it'll be a very viable strat to just focus down that splatling yeah so we have yep the charger comes back out as i expected and the dually squelters are coming about, out again like you asked for um looks like it's basically the same comp on both sides with the exception of an ink brush which i can definitely see why with so many greats and its clan blitz ink brush is definitely a def uh, an option here yeah, I'd also like to point out the machine, um, and I want to point this out less because of the main weapon itself, and more because of fizzy bombs down that choke. Oh bomb. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> huge, um, huge chip damage, huge room to get those picks. Yeah, uh, tactical are coming out here from uh, the stingrays. <laughs> Unfortunately, two going down, not going to be able to make much use of that. Ends up here, or no, that's the Dooley Squelchers holding onto that power climb, giving away their location at all times. Um, and the Luna here on the left side going through mid. The entire army, <laughs> the entirety of um, <laughs> of the Stingray just collapsed on that one poor guy. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure, yep, they still have somebody here on the grates because the uh, the Stingrays weren't really paying much attention to it. But not really be able to make quite much of that push with how few players were actually ready for it. Yeah, you can imagine how the, the, the call-out must have went there. It's like, oh, hey, there's a Sheen. Uh, they're vulnerable. Drop on them. And all the while, the brush is like, hee hee hee, there's no one's my basket. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I can just imagine, because I remember, I, like, right before we switched over to that Dooley Squelchers, I saw the Luna behind them. I was like, oh, yeah. come on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but yeah. Fortunately for the Stingrays, uh, the uh, Scarlet only managing to get 80 points, or sorry, 20 points out of that. Um, but goes down, two go down here to Booyah Bomb and one other person, I believe, Charger, being the last one alive with that ball. Gonna pop Vacuum here to try and prevent the opponents from scoring. Gonna be successful thus far. Gets the kill. Barry, that was, that was a great back there. Just stalling, slowing down that brush, slowing down that Luna until their team could come Yeah, but it's, again, nobody's there defending the basket because two went down and they end up with painting for special. I don't. I still don't think they're going to get any more than ten points out of this. But no. if they keep if they keep doing this, eventually it'll work. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's kind of the thing, right? If if the stingers can't push back, it doesn't matter how many points they get in one push. If they keep doing it, they can yeah. chip down. Um, we can see the pro trying to engage the hydra. Unfortunately, is going to go down. That hydra standing kind of uncontested in mid. The charger uh, has their attention focused somewhere else right now. Um, yeah. But. Hydra finding a second pick. Charger here getting pressured. Popping, yeah, I'd say that's a good booyah just to keep yourself safe and push that charger away. Um, as the, you've got a, a teammate coming in on the right side there. Um, speaking of which, we're going in with them, but they're just dead. They're super dead. <laughs> there we go. 
that's some nice defense, and that's what you want, right? Because now, yeah. even though they're And now that machine team should team. go down here. It's a 3v1 situation. That should... Yep, there it is. Yeah. Machine so goes down, trades out. And they have not... They, they've gotten to 60, so the, so the double power clan push won't work for them anymore. Uh, for sorry for uh, the stingrays, the double power clan push will only get them to 61. Um, so that's a big thing for uh, for DePaul to have done here. It just stingrays really have to get on their game if they want to if they want to win this game. And I think stingrays have the advantage, um, but they're they're just not patient enough, right? You can see they're they're running in immediately. They want that clam in now instead of just okay. We because not not that the enemy team is just coming off of respawn um and they get punished for it so again they just need to play patient take it slow focus on taking back mid first then go in for the clam yeah you have only mid. one enemy alive that is the luna blaster and you have three uh, teammates pushing on right with that charger standing there on the bridge uh, controlling that space it might even find the charge the hydra here if they're if they can aim but unfortunately not being able to, to get that pick you're gonna be pushed out here by the ink brush probably gonna even get killed here Yep, dies to that ink brush. The push is stuffed uh, without even yeah. having four into power clam. Great positioning, though. I mean, that's what you want, right? Um, yeah. Again, just, yeah, that, that, that's what you need. You need to get yourself into those positions more often and just stay there. Exert your presence. Exert your pressure. Your, your pressure. Um, like, when the Hydra stands in mid, right, that's what they're doing. They're exerting their pressure. Um, yeah. Um, and we saw that paid off for them because they got several picks out of it. Um, yep. And that's really what you want to do with chargers. Like while your team is pushing, you have to keep your sight line on that basket so that the enemy team. Oh, <laughs> Luna charging up, killing that charger. Nice play. Might even be able to find the dually sculptures here if they're lucky. But dually sculptures uh, being smart and retreating away from those blasts. The 180 direct, just gonna style on him at this point. <laughs> but that charger managing to take that pick. No power clams online for stingrays. This is probably the game. And it is. All right, it is a well played six to one victory here for Nepal Scarlet. Uh, I know uh, <laughs> you were slightly biased. No, no, it was a well played game, definitely by the Scarlet. <laughs> oh, that was great. Um, Scarlet, you guys did fantastic there. Um, I absolutely love your Luna Blaster. Uh, Blaster, my baby. <laughs> Stingers, uh, I oh man, your Range Blaster, my like my beloved. Um, but yeah, no. If it, if it seemed like I was being uh, harsh on anyone uh, on any one team, it's just because I want this to serve. Because I know both teams are gonna go back and vod review this, so um, I want to kind of like for them just give a little bit of input. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But no, both teams played that great. Um, that was a fantastic tournament set. Yeah, I think um, really the one thing that the string Stingrays struggled to do the entire set was just get themselves together as a team. And we saw a bit of that in that Clan Blitz match. Uh, they just needed, there was just a little bit of 1v1s that they weren't quite winning that cost them the game. Yeah, um, especially because, yeah, those 1v1s in a situation where they just weren't ready to take them um because they had they hadn't really established mid control so they didn't really have a lot of paint to move around in um and so they they just kind of got collapsed on um and, and yeah i mean that's that's that patience you know waiting for your team to be there and i think that the team plays they made ended up working out really well like uh with that ink vac um when the charger popped that in front of basket and then you know the rest of the filter did um, yeah yeah um and then Scarlet, I think Scarlet did well in that they were just really, really good at consistently holding pressure, and their teamwork was fantastic. I know we both keep talking about <laughs> push on Sturgeon Zones. Um, yeah, that, that was yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah, it was a really well coordinated push. Um, just yeah, it, it was it was beautiful to watch. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. I was about to say, okay, um, I think we're probably going to call it here. Um, oh, wait, what? I said I was going to plug my socials. Yes, go plug your socials. Tell them where you yeah. where they can find you. <laughs> yes, you can find me at Icar's Other Eye on Twitter. Um, I do casting other 
tournaments sometimes uh you can go watch those if you want to see more of me um otherwise i post a lot of memes on twitter um so if you like those go check it out um but also if you want any advice i can give that to you um uh both me and jay slash have been in the scene for a while um we fought against a lot of teams we fought against uh, each other <laughs> we fought against each other many times we scrimmed each other so uh both of us can give you guys feedback um I can hook you up with people who can give you feedback, like uh, high div coaches um, or like specialty weapon players. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested in that, hit me up. You can probably hit J Slash up for that as well. Um, but yeah. Yeah, um, and of course, this is my main channel, my YouTube channel, but I also have a Twitter at J Slosh, um, spelled the same way as my YouTube name. Uh, I think with that, that'll be the end of the stream today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, it was a great set. I uh, look forward to doing some more of this in the future. See you later. GG's.